What's up, pretty gang? It's your favorite nail tech, Peaches, back with another video. Today, we are doing a Valentine's Day set, Pink on Pink Marble. It's Thursday, February 1st, so you already know that's the mood that we're in. Before we get started, I do wanna encourage you guys to check the description. I actually offer nail classes now. I do have a group class about French tips coming up next month, and you can also book a one-on-one -on -one with me if you're in the Sacramento area or the surrounding Bay area, or just NorCal in general, okay? So if you wanna keep up with me, be sure to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, turn your notifications on, all that good stuff. So I am gonna be showing you guys um, this pink on pink marble. I've done marble a ton of times here on my channel. Y'all are gonna have to excuse the door cause I'm at work, okay? And so I was like, what better way to kick off February than with pink on pink on pink on pink, okay? Period, big period. So when we are doing marble, we are working a little bit wetter than we normally work. Now on this particular nail, I'm not gonna lie, my beads are not as wet as they should be. You're gonna see me kind of struggle a little bit to get the cuticle area together, but nonetheless, it's still okay. So you're gonna wanna lay your lighter or less, um, I don't wanna say less potent color, but whatever color you wanna be, the background, you're gonna lay first and the color that you want to stand out the most, you're gonna lay on top. So with the swirling motion, instead of just swirling, keep going, 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 because that can actually muddle it, you're gonna see that I actually just do a couple rotations of my brush, keep the shape and let it fall how it falls. So in the cuticle area, we need smaller beads, but you guys can see that, um, again, I'm laying the lighter color first and the more vibrant color next, and I am pretty much just gonna do a couple of movements just to get the general marble going. Again, if you move your brush around too much or you work too wet, what's gonna happen is the colors will muddle, you guys. So if you are struggling with a marble that it seems like the colors are blending together or it seems like you know the marble is so muddled and blended that it just pretty much looks like, kinda like sloppy looking, then this video will hopefully help you with that, okay? So I do wanna also mention, I'm gonna show you guys encapsulation one time in this video. It's gonna be super detailed because I wanna focus mostly on the marbling technique. So if you are looking for a video that's like heavy into the encapsulation, this is not gonna be it, but I do have other videos on my channel that are like that, okay? Okay. So for those wondering, the colors that I'm using is gonna be Candy Yum Yum, and I think Water My Melons by Not Polished, because it's not Not Polished, not nothing. Period, that's all we do, that's all we use, okay? Liquid is Young Nails, my brush size is a size 20 just from the nail supply, there's no brand. So again, we're gonna lay quite a large bead of the less vibrant color and whatever is the deeper or more vibrant or brighter color is going right on top. And you guys can see how I kind of just move the acrylic around and wet it up a little bit so it can mix on its own, right? So what you're gonna have to be aware of is gravity is at play. So if you work too wet, it's going to bring all of the acrylic down and it's going to take away from your marble because everything is gonna slide. So there is a fine line between working too wet and just wet enough. I do have a bead to, um, I mean a liquid to bead, a liquid to powder bead ratio video recently on my channel. So if you're struggling with that, go ahead and check that out, okay? So as you guys can see, I'm working wet enough that everything is able to swirl and blend. And if I need to extend the acrylic out, I'm just gonna pat it and tap it. Cause what we don't want to do is have a situation to where our nail is really lumpy and bumpy before we lay the encapsulation layer, okay? So once you have the general um, layout of the nail and the general marbleization, you're gonna just see how I'm like filling in these areas and just kind of like tapping and pulling and using my brush to kind of guide it through so I'm not messing up my marble, but also so that I'm getting the right look. So here is where I'm gonna show you guys how to cap this nail. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I use the base of the acrylic design to be some of the strength and then I encapsulate only enough to have to cover the design so we don't file through and then just to provide that additional strength in the apex and everything. So as you guys can see, I lay a nice size bead and I'm going to just pull it down so that way we're building the strength that we need. You're also gonna see that I am, see how I'm intentionally pulling the clear over the sides? If you do not do this with an encapsulated design, you run the risk of having random pockets to where moisture and liquid can get in, which means it's going to tear your enhancement up from the inside to the freaking out, all right? So as I'm moving around and making sure that nothing is lumpy and bumpy, because again, that's not the look we're going for, okay? We want a well-balanced nail 
all right? One that's basically going to be structurally sound and just visibly looking appealing. So if you're having trouble with encapsulation, I would suggest working less liquidy and trying a consistency that is kind of in between, you know, I want to say maybe slightly less, no, slightly more liquidy than what you would lay for a just plain basic color because we do need it to be able to get over different areas if there are lumps and bumps. So think of it that way. Just imagine you're laying a basic color but work slightly more um, liquid in your bead, okay? So we want to make sure we're tucking everything exactly where it needs to go. And we just want to make sure we have a nice structure to work with so that way filing will be a breeze, okay? So just think of it as we're setting ourselves up for success for the next steps, all right? All right. So after this, we're going to jump right back into the marble. Um, I do also want to say, I hope you guys are having a great day. It's 3 19 PM where I'm at, you know, I have like a little break between clients. So it's nice to kind of just be able to get this done and out of the way. So again, I'm laying a nice size bead of whatever I want to be a background color. And then the other color on top. And I would say to get a really nice marble, you just want to stick to the similar pattern of how you're moving your brush. So as you guys can see, I tend to move my brush to the left hand side and either swirl up or swirl down. And I consistently do that on all 10. And then if I'm too close to the cuticle area, I will push it up. And if I'm close to the tip, I will go ahead and bring it down. That way I'm not messing up my marble, but I'm getting all the cuticle areas tucked. So if it's not more so about I want the exact look on all 10 because the fun thing about marbles is being able to appreciate the swirl, but it's more so about what pattern am I using to get this marble because marble can really look a million different ways, right? So you just want to stick to having the same amount of background color to um, whatever's going to be your um, like foreground color or like, you know what I'm saying? The mixing color, or you just want not or, but you want to do that. And also make sure that the way you're moving your brush is going to be in the same pattern every single time. So that way there's no issues and everything looks cohesive. So again, we're here in the cuticle area and we want to make sure that we have enough pattern there and enough product so when we go and file later on there's no issues okay so just kind of take a look and think about how am i swirling like not me personally but you okay where i'm pretending that i'm you i'm gonna think about how do i normally swirl and is that providing me a look that i want how much product do i actually use am i using a bunch of tiny little beads or am i using a couple of larger beads and letting gravity do its work you know am i working with too much liquid or am i working too dry those are all things you need to take in consideration when you are doing these type of designs okay so i also want you guys to notice um the amount of liquid that i added to the first bead versus the second bead that i add so you can see the first bead is maybe a little less liquidy and then i go in to grab the next bead add a little more liquid and that's kind of what sets it off to be um, able to let gravity kind of pull it down and take control i do want you guys to know that you don't have to keep adding a million different beads to expose or get more color when you move things around and shift it slightly it's gonna show you what's underneath so in this area where i laid more light pink as I'm marbling and moving the other colors around, you're gonna notice the light pink that's already there is also going to shift. So it's, as you guys can see right here, so it's really just kind of like a, a back and forth game. You know, some people are naturally better at marble than others. Some people are able to build up their skills quicker than others. So if you're a person that this comes naturally, then, you know, practice and you'll find the technique that works for you. But if you're someone that's better at other skills, maybe like ombre, then you'll have to think about how can I use my ombre skills to strengthen my marbling, okay? So if you're a person that's better at ombre, you can think of it as, okay, when I'm doing ombre, right, we have this much of the nail, this portion of the nail, where the base color goes, and this portion of the nail where I blend down. So for you, it might help for you to think of it in zones, right? So the bottom portion of the, of the nail, like from the tip to the tip of the natural nail to the tip of the um, 
fake nail or whatever, you might want to think like, okay, normally here I would ombre, but here, this is where I'm going to lay my substantial amount of acrylic to marble. And then in the cuticle area, I'm going to do less. And somewhere in there, instead of me adding a bunch of beads, I'm going to take my brush and pack and blend. And that might help you a lot more. I'm hoping that makes sense. So um, really, once you start breaking things down in terms of how can I use my other skills to strengthen this skill here, it's going to help you a lot more. So we're done with that. I already did my finished filing with the cuticle area. Um, if you've been watching me for a while, you guys know I like to use my e-file first because it debulks in the cuticle area and then it's really, really easy to get a nice crisp shape with my file. This is an 8080 grit black file. You can find these on Amazon, but I do have some on my storefront, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys. It's, it, they don't hit the same as the ones you get from the true nail supply store, okay, in person. Um, but they will do the trick if you're used to using like white files or only like 100 or 180 files, this will definitely give you a boost in shaping. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shape and then you guys are gonna watch me top coat and then that's pretty much it like we'll be freaking out of here and hopefully i'll be able to have this video up today on february 1st because i didn't even realize it was february 1st and i've been doing Feb. Uh, whoop i've been doing um what do you call that i've been doing <laughs> what do you call that i've been doing valentine's day sets um since like january i don't want to say beginning of january maybe like mid january so i've definitely got some content coming for you guys and then next week i right before valentine's i do actually have some sets that are um nail models like they booked a particular set that i wanted to do or make or whatever so we'll have some more you know some little creative stuff here and there so i'm pretty excited about that i'm hoping you guys enjoyed this video and if you are a person that's been watching my shorts and you subscribe to me because of my shorts, I hope that you like this longer format content as well. And if you're a person who likes my longer format content, I hope you've been able to enjoy my shorts. Um, you know, I post a lot, like shorts I post literally every day. It's only the long-term content that I've slowed down on or long <sighs> format, y'all. Y'all get what I'm trying to say. Anyways, if you are wanting to see even more content from me, you guys can always visit my Instagram page. I literally post every set that I do. I post that on my um, story, the like behind the scenes and everything. You guys can see a little bit into my day. So you can follow me at Nails by Pretty Face. And then if you want to see a little bit into my personal life and things that I do, like, you know, I like to go out to eat a lot and stuff like that. You can follow me at Pretty Face Peaches and yeah i'm just i mean i'm glad to be here i'm glad to be back it feels great doing voiceover again after being gone for the past month i've seen a lot of you guys just sending so much positive messages and encouraging messages to me and i honestly really appreciate that like i said if you're interested in learning any of these type of techniques from me you can go ahead and book me for a one-on-one -on -one private class and with that being said hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one